Hi everyone, welcome to my review of Sergio Leone's uh, Fistful of Dynamite, um, aka Duck You Sucker, aka Duck Your Heads, um, aka Once Upon a Time in a Revolution. Um, I'll be calling it a Fistful of Dynamite uh, just for the sake of video, and um, yes, uh, I've not been doing, you know, my, I didn't, um, basically the last Sergio Leone uh, review I done was back in, back in April probably, um, yeah, that I uploaded, and that was, um, of course, Once Upon a Time in the West. Um, Maybe it was May actually that I uploaded that, but yes, um, of course I was in the middle of a director series, um, and I said I'd be getting around to you know watching this, <clears throat> and uh, you know I just I just never, I never did you know I, I kept meaning to watch it and then I you know I watched something else instead, and I watch you know films every day and uh, just one of the cases of just, you know it's just been put on hold um, and you know I've not seen it I had never seen it before, um, you know back in uh, twenty fifteen you know by the end of that year. I'd seen, you know, all the other Sergio Leone films, um, you know, the other five uh, of the six that I've been reviewing. Um, this one I just put on hold for a while. I think it's just because um, I couldn't find a Blu-ray that was Region B, you know, at the time and stuff. And just, um, yeah, I, I, I re-watched, you know, I've re-watched all the other ones quite a few times now. Um, but this one I never saw. Um, so I was really interested to see what was, uh, you know, what this film was like. Of course, it's not really an acclaimed, well, it's a acclaimed film, but... It's not, you know, on the level of his other films, you know, in terms of acclaim. Um, you know, even a fistful of dollars, you know, that's that's. Um, it's got really good ratings, uh, reviews, and stuff. Uh, and this one seems to be, you know, not not really talked about, and you're you're not really acclaimed, to be honest, you know, with critics and stuff. Um, so I was a bit dubious, you know, because um, I was thinking, why is, uh, you know, sandwiched in between Once Upon a Time in the West um, and America, you know. That's some of the most acclaimed films of all time. Um, I've, of course, I've reviewed uh, Once Upon a Time in the West. I thought it was one of the absolute finest films of all time. Um, I was thinking, why is this film not really talked about? Why is there such a dip, you know, in terms of acclaim? And just general, you know, how people, you know, regard this film. Um, so I was a bit sceptical. Um, but, you know, I really did. I wanted to think, you know, maybe this is a, you know, a, you know, a hidden gem, you know, kind of thing. Although it's, you know, still talked about um, from time to time. Uh, you know, maybe I would I would discover a masterpiece, you know. I wasn't that hopeful, but, you know, maybe a great at least. Um, <clears throat> because, you know, Sergio Leone, as I've said before, is one of my absolute favourite directors. Although he's made quite, you know, very few films he made, uh, you know. Five of the films I'd seen before this, um, you know, of the six that, I've, that I'll be reviewing, um, are all on my list of favourite films, uh, I think. But A Fistful of Dollars is close to a masterpiece. The rest are... For sure, masterpieces. Um, so you know, Sergio Leone is one of my favourite directors. So I just thought, I was, you know, regardless of what it turns out like, I was really looking forward to this film. But I did have some hopes that it could be, you know, maybe quite something. Uh, I was really looking forward to it. James Coburn, um, you know, I really like him as an actor. Roger Steiger, um, you know, he's great as well. Um, you know, you've, you've got some other, uh, you know, kind of famous people at the time. Um, but these two guys, you know, especially looking forward to seeing, you know, what they would, how they would, um, you know, be in this film, especially James Coburn. Um, I think he's a great actor. <clears throat> but yes, um, 1971, and you know, Sergio Leone would have a 13-year gap between this and you know, Once Upon a Time in America. Um, and you know, of course, there's some under, you know, um, projects that you know never came to, um, you know, came to light. Um, but really, yeah, it's just an odd, uh, an odd gap, really. Um, and you know, for all the expectations I had, you know, and, 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 and factors that it could be disappointing, but also could be, you know, I thought it could be quite something. In the end, it's somewhere in between. Um, but generally, it is very disappointing, um, unfortunately. I was very, very disappointed with this film, um, unfortunately, and, and just, <clears throat> you know, quite shatteringly in places. Um, what a shame. I, I really, really not happy. Um, I just saw this film, you know, maybe half an hour ago. Um, and this was my first watch, of course. Um, and just, you know, it's just a real shame. And it feels like, uh, you know, to sum it up as well, just before I go into it, you know, A Fistful of Dollars even, you know, they're low budget films, some of these ones, but they never really felt cheap. That's, that's the key difference, you know. And, uh, you know, maybe people don't feel that, maybe they do think they're cheap. I didn't feel so because of how masterful the, the direction was, the cinematography, the editing. And it just the grit, you know, the gritty feel only added to the experience, really. You know, Fistful of Dollars just had a couple of issues, you know, B grade sort of 
issues, just with the script really and some of the dubbing. Um, but really, there, there wasn't, you know, a lot of the things you find in B films um, did not really affect uh, official dollars. And it, I have to compare it to that because, you know, it's not going to be compared to Once Upon a Time in the West or, you know, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly because it's way, you know, it's completely different as well, you know. But yes, this is the B Western that he made that felt, you know, cheap, I feel. Um, and it's a real shame because it's his final Western. Um, and yes, uh, James Coburn, he plays, uh, you know, John, I can't remember his second name. And then you've got uh, one as well, um, played by Rod Steiger. And basically it's set in the 1910s, I believe. Uh, and they get caught up in the, the Mexican Revolution. Um, and basically, uh, James Coburn is an Irishman. Um, and, you know, he's on the run. He's a convict. Uh, he's, a, you know, he's wanted. Um, and he accidentally, you know, teams up with Rod Steiger and they kind of get involved in the revolution, uh, Mexican Revolution, without really, you know, setting out to do so. The centerpiece really is, is this bank, uh, kind of bank robbery. Um, and, you know, there's other things after that, you know, massive battle sequences and stuff. The bridge sequence in particular, though, in the, just after the middle part, I was really impressed with, and I thought, you know, that's an explosion. Uh, and, you know, because uh, it just looks so, it was just so great, you know, and how real it was as well. Um, and it was really quite mind blowing. Um, another thing, yeah, there was some things to praise about this film. The action, actually, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about, you know, the action is actually quite good throughout the film. Um, <clears throat> you know, it's, it's nowhere near as good editing as his, you know, his, his other films. Um, but for the most part, it is quite strong editing in terms of the action. Um, and it is, you know, the actual gunplay. Um, it is pr pretty well put together. For, um, and there's some really good sequence, actually, action. Um, and, you know, there's a train crash near the end, which is a bit mixed. But the actual crash itself uh, was really quite well put together. You know, practical effects, you know, it's really quite great. Um, but yes, the, the first sort of, um, the opening sequence, um, you know, I, straight away I noticed, you know, oh, what a shame, you know, there were so many issues. Um, <clears throat> the first thing is really the acting. There was a lot, there was a lot of B acting in this film, uh, B grade acting, and, um, you know, the first people at the beginning, it's just so over the top, you know, the stuff that's going on. It's a really bizarre scene, you know, and that point, when this scene came on, I was just thinking, this could be, you know, quite a weak film, you know, if it doesn't improve. Um, and there was just this, if you've seen it, you know what I mean. I don't really know how to describe it, but the scene when these people were eating in this, um, in this carriage, I think. Um, and basically, yes, uh, Leone just kind of um, zoomed into all their faces and stuff, and, and when they were in their mouths, when they were eating, and their eyes as well, but really weird, off putting, you know, off tone basically. And um, the zooms were just so unnecessary. And I was just thinking, what's going on there? You know, and then there's people getting naked um, right in front of the camera and stuff. Just very, very strange, you know, and it just off tone, it just didn't make any sense. Um, and then there's people getting shot and stuff. Um, there was a pretty good scene, uh, part of that scene where, you know, the people came in with guns, it was quite tense. But generally, the first. Um, I think the first 15 minutes was pretty bad, actually, in most places. Um, you know, the zooms in this film, they're not good, actually, for the most part. <clears throat> Throughout most of the film, really, they're not good zooms. And um, Once Upon a Time in the West, the Dollars Trilogy, Once Upon a Time in America, I never found issues in this sense, you know. All perfectly placed, the zooms, you know, and the camera movements. The way it was edit they were edited, you know. A Fistful of Dollars, you know, even though I don't think it's quite a masterpiece, the editing and directing pretty much flawless and you know as I've said before you know the films only get better after that of, of his, his work uh, not in you know not this film because um, this is a big step down for him um, and it really was a disappointment but yes the zooms throughout this film you know not good there's also flashback sequences now this came out after the wild bunch of course um, and as I've said in my once upon a time West review <clears throat> the wild bunch was quite a key turning point for westerns in particular I'm not a fan of that film I say um, and you know, I've, I've said before how it influenced a lot of this style, you know, people copied very cheap, I feel. Um, unfortunately, this feels like, uh, in places, a little bit like that. You know, the editing is particular. Very, very cheap. Uh, and the flashbacks um, and stuff are really, really poorly done, actually, for the most part. They're not used well. Um, there's a lot of use of slow motion. And it's really poor slow motion. It's not good, you know, and slow motion can be done so well. <clears throat> in cinema, it's overused in this and it's cheap, uh, and the actual effects, and uh, just the dream sequences really don't work for the most part. 
the dream sequences and the flashbacks. So. And the first 45 minutes, basically, as well, uh, we'll quickly talk um, about this. The characters, the way they're introduced, Rod Steiger in particular, is just a comedy relief character. Um, really annoying, just uh, not taken seriously, and, and that's the, the most, some of the most important parts of films. The character introduction. Um, it's just a mess about, piss around, you know, people are just pissing about. Um, and it's just not funny, and the humour doesn't work throughout most of this film. Really, that's one of the things. The humour doesn't work, and it worked perfectly, really, in all the other films I've seen from Sergio Leone. You know, he would co-write this again, of course. Um, the script, there's a couple of lines here and there that's quite interesting, you know, quite touching. But generally, the script is weak. Um, <clears throat> that's one of the things. <clears throat> you know, the, the script um, throughout this film is not good. It's pretty weak. Um, and the character development in this first 45 minutes in particular is not good. Um, at times non-existent and you don't I don't think get invested you know in these characters um, you know and the comedy was bad and the editing was cheap and all over the place it was messy you know it was messy there were a couple of moments here and there were good James Coburn I will praise him throughout the film for the most part he was really good he's one of the things that really brought the film up um, Rod Steiger was mixed for the most part he wasn't good at times he was he was quite a lovable kind of guy um, for the most part, he's a bumbling idiot, um, <clears throat> and quite annoying, uh, and just very, very, very campy, you know, very campy acting, and um, just some of the stuff he does is just, again, off tone. Um, after the first 45 minutes, it picks up, but really, it doesn't pick up too much, and it never becomes anything more than good. Um, and really, the from, from the middle part to, to, to the, you know, excluding the last 30 minutes, you could say, it becomes pretty pretty decent actually in, t in places you know there's actually a couple of really good moments I would say um, the bridge scene in particular and just some of the camaraderie between the two of them um, throughout this film though the cinematography overall you know I, I've praised <coughs> you know of course Once Upon a Time in the West the Doris Trilogy and we'll get to Once Upon a Time in America but the cinematography is always flawless in a Leone film basically um, now in this film you know, cinematography encompasses everything, you know, lighting to the actual camera movements, um, you know, framing, everything like that, you know, you know the stuff. Um, in some places, of course, because the zooms are part of the cinematography, the zooms are shit, really, um, let's just face it, and uh, a couple of the camera movements here and there, they're quite cheap. The framing, in particular, though, is, in places, quite stunning, um, and, you know, the lighting, um, and just some of the way it captures landscapes, you know, the lens choices, you know. It's all really good, quite a lot of it. Um, but, you know, it's, it's not great because of some of the zooms and stuff. That, that comes into account, you know. Um, so even that, the cinematography is not, like, stunning or anything. And it was never really mind-blowing, you know, in terms of, you know, the landscape shots and stuff in most of the other films. Um, but yes, the, the editing as well. Um, some of the action is well edited. For the most part, it's pretty cheap. Um, and as well, you know, the, the way that he, he, he kind of goes between different scenes at times, it just doesn't really have a sense of direction, you know. This film, for the most part, isn't well directed, really. Uh, there's a couple of places here and there where it is, but really this is not what I expected from Sergio Leone. He, he was one of the best directors, you know. The way he could direct a film uh, was just something else. You know, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Tarantino uh, has, has said the best directed film of all time, and as I've said before, not far off. You know, not far off. In this film, I can't really praise the direction because it's just a mess for the most part. You know, it's just, just as well. The narrative is is quite weak, especially to begin with. But obviously, after that first forty five minutes, I did start to care. You know, a little bit for the characters. Um, James Coburn. You know, his character of John. He has some interesting character development at times and stuff when they're on about, you know, going to America and stuff. It was quite, you know, it was quite touching. Um, this is, of course, it is really an epic, yeah. <clears throat> and he obviously tries to tie in different uh, themes, you know, big scale stuff as well, you know, and, and, and things of a wider, you know, broader scale. Um, as an epic, it doesn't really work too well. Um, and as well, it's because... Although, you know, the characters set in a little bit, you know, after that 45 minutes, um, they're still not great. The characters in this film are not that compelling. Um, epics need to have that, you know. Well, every film really does need to have that. 
Um, but even once they're developed, you know, at times he just veers off, you know, and he goes to these random people getting shot and stuff. Of course, to make points of, uh, you know, other things, you know, the wider the wider picture, the bigger picture. He does that perfectly in Once Been Done West. And, you know, in The Good, The Bad and The Ugly, you know, it's all great. You know, it's always never loses focus. That's the thing. This film does, I think, you know, at times we just veer off and it's not as personal. Um, and it's also just the actual scope of it is nowhere near as um, compelling, really. You know, it, it's not an epic where I, I actually it benefits from going bigger, the film. You could say that's what I'm trying to say. And also it's not, you know, you don't really feel consistently you know an actual emotional attachment to the characters and because they're not taken seriously in the first if you first act of the film um even when you know there is character development afterwards you know it never goes that far to, to kind of make me think oh i'm really enjoying these characters it just makes me think yeah at times i did enjoy them but overall it, it doesn't work too well um you know this is a real disappointment you know the music though i will praise the music um pretty stunning any Morricone. I uh, don't need to say any more than that. You know how much I, I love him if you've watched my other reviews. Um, you know, <laughs> that's one of the things that keeps the film going, actually, the music. It's really beautiful. Um, it's not one of his best scores, but uh, definitely something. Um, I'll wrap up this review now. You know, very disappointing film and um, a mess, messy epic. Um, and there's actually a lot of horrendous moments early on, um, really gross out stuff. The humour and everything just doesn't work. Um, as well, the ending, <laughs> you know, the ending, just watch the film and find out what the ending is. Um, there's a shot, really, where they could have ended it quite well, with a fade, you'll know what I mean. Uh, but no, just another campy moment and explosions and stuff. A bit too much explosions in this film, actually, you know, towards the end. <coughs> it's, just, it's just kind of for the sake of it in the end, but it was well done, you know, throughout the first half. Um, really, what I'm trying to say is this film is mediocre. Um... It never really amounts to even an average film because, you know, they've got so much bad stuff in it early on. You've not really got throughout characters you really care for, for me. The narrative overall is, is um, you know, it's just above weak, really, because, because uh, even though it does set in, in, you know, the second half a bit, again, it veers off, you know, the final act is a bit of a mess. And we never really get, you know, the progression of the narrative. There's not much of a drive, really, you know, the, they go and rob, you know, banks and st stuff, and, and they kind of, they're involved in a revolution, but there's not really much of a narrative, it's not focused, as I've said, really, too much. The characters did become quite, a little bit compelling in places, um, <clears throat> and of course, the cinematography, um, the action in this film, throughout quite a lot of the film, and um, the music, you know, really, really good, um, and James Coburn is a good protagonist. But, you know, it just never amounts to much with his arc. He doesn't really have much of an arc. Um, and because the character's only really set in after the first 45 minutes, it, it really it, it does let the film down. And it never allows it to just amount to anything, really. It's a weak... It's, it's very experimental as well. It's very experimental in its editing and stuff, um, and zooms as well. And just, you know, it's not got a good structure. It, it's a bit... It's, it's messy, you know. Uh, it would have been average for me um, if it wasn't for just some of that final act. Just once again, just just went down a little bit. I'd have to give this night film a fifty nine percent, and that's you know it's just below the average mark for me. Um, it's a real shame, you know. As I said before, <coughs> Sergio Leone, he's in my top ten directors. You know, it's one of the absolute finest for me. And that was excluding this film, so it's not, you know, it doesn't bring him down. It's just I really did want to love this as well. It's a it's a very, very, you know, I barely like this film. I would give it a like, you know, if someone said, <clears throat> do you like this film? Yeah, I'd give it a like, but um, it's close to not being a like, if you know what I mean. It's not a film that, you know, I really care for too much. Um, I didn't dislike it, though, really, overall. Because there was some, some stuff, you know, I did really like. Really the middle of the film is stuff that... It's consistently, you know, decent, I would say, uh, and places good. And obviously, for, as I said, you know, throughout the cinematography, the um, the action and uh, the music uh, is w quite wonderful in places. Um, you know, the framing is quite immaculate. Um, obviously, some of the zooms and stuff, it really lets it down, makes it cheap. Um, to sum it up, though, yes, um, a B-Western, um, you know, 
I don't know what the budget was, but clearly not much. Uh, a B Western that feels cheap. And, you know, as I've said before, not all B films, you know, films with, with low budgets, have to feel cheap. This film does, and, you know, it's because, as well, it's just not taken seriously, I don't feel. Um, that's so weird coming from in between, you know, once we're trying to West and America. His two most serious films, you know, and tonally they are, per tonally they are perfect films. Um, this is all over the place at times. But, uh, you know, it's just not bad. It's not bad film. Um, it's not weak uh, overall. <clears throat> but really, it's just mediocre. Just below average. Um, but for God's sake, you know, this is Sergio Leone. Um, I didn't think I'd be saying that, you know. It's just such a shame. And I've not, you know, let the expectations and the fact that he was, you know, he made all these great films come into account with this score. Um, but, you know, my actual reactions to the film, of course, of course I'm disappointed. And, you know, I don't ever want to be really... I'm never really pleased when I see a less than average film. Of course not. Um, and I'm even more so, you know, pissed off that it was Sergio Leone who made this film. I can see why this is underlooked, you know. Of course, the, you know, great if you if you find something more than I did. I did like it. You know, I didn't dislike it. <clears throat> Just, you know, I really wanted to love it. And um, regardless of, you know, my expectations, uh, you know, going into the film, on its own, you know, a, a, uh, a work that doesn't really amount to much at all. And uh, it's got a lot of flaws, m massive flaws. And it's a bit of a mess of an epic, you know, it's mediocre. It, yeah. It's neither it's neither uh, good or bad, you know, really. It, it's in between. And, um, you know, I did like James Coburn, but most of the other characters I didn't like at all, um, for the most part. And, uh, yeah, not a good film. And, um, you know, next up, though, will be a more positive review. <coughs> in terms of Leone, because we have... Once upon a time in America. I'm going to be uh, probably watching that within a week. Rewatching. This will be my third time viewing. Um, and you know, I've probably said what I, you know, my rough thoughts in another video of uh, Sergio Leone. Um, so I won't actually ruin, you know, what I think of this film. Um, you know, you have to find out when I review it. Um, but yes, um, <clears throat> a real disappointment. Um, Fist of the Dynamite. Um, Thanks for watching my review.